Welcome to Transformation with Martinet. Martinet Emmons is a transformational life coach who broke free from childhood abuse, sexual trauma, and overcame cancer to become a powerful force of healing and hope for others. Martinet describes traumatic events as fierce emotional tsunamis. They can leave impending doom and destructive tidal waves of emotions that hit you when you least expect it. Martinet helps her clients dive into the depths of their trauma and pain as she stands fiercely advocating for them to shine a light on those experiences and find the lesson in the pain. She serves as a beacon of hope that guides you to see the strength, lessons, and purpose that can be born from the pain. You can feel alive with purpose again when you awaken your dormant strength, step into your power with a sense of peace, and discover a new wave of hope with the right tools and support. Martine and her guests are here shining their lights today through empowering stories of hardship and transformation to inspire you to find hope and to see that there is a beautiful blue ocean of serenity, happiness, and fulfillment in your future. Transformation with Martine starts now. Welcome, everyone. My intro always gets me a little emotional because it's a lot of it is to do with my story. So it still gets to me. Um, welcome, everyone, to Transformation with Martine. This is where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. I'm very happy to be back today. Fridays are my favorite day just to be here sharing stories of hope with you all. And I am getting a little emotional as usual. Um, for those of you who don't know, my show is every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern. 10 a.m. Pacific, and my show is about hope. The guests that I invite on here and I, we all agree that us as humans, we can get back up from anything. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest to you today, Miriam Matthews. She's a wonderful, inspirational coach. And um, Miriam, let, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit better? <laughs> Hi, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Martine. So my name is is Miriam. Um, I am a Christian transformation coach. Um, I'm a daughter. I'm a wife. Um, my kids know me as mom. Um, I'm a licensed therapist. I've been in the field of social work for about eight years. Um, and I just want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to come onto your platform, uh, which is mm -hmm. so powerful. It, uh, it allows me the opportunity to be very intentional about mm -hmm. taking a pause and honoring my story and honoring my voice. Yes. Um, so I just yes. thank you so much for your platform. And if I do cry, that's okay. I, I gave myself permission <laughs> to cry because that's, it's all about just being in the present moment. So yeah. when I was thinking about what to share, um, I, I, literally went back to where I was born and, and who uh, was my nuclear family, who's my nuclear family. Yeah, I was born yeah, to yeah. Lucy and Leroy of Atlanta, Georgia um, mm -hmm. at Northside Hospital, which was regarded as like the baby uh, birthing capital of hospitals. Oh my gosh, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I was just imagining that I must have been like, you know, uh, just exuberant and innocent and uh, just the yeah. cutest baby ever. For sure. um, <laughs> my grandmother um, was there. She came from Ghana. She's from West Africa mm -hmm. and she had mm -hmm. come um, to the States to help my mother raise us. Um, my, I have, I have two older brothers. Uh, one is two years older than me. And then I have an older one who was still in Ghana at the time. So okay. I am the youngest of three siblings. Mm -hmm. um, my childhood nickname uh, is Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> Fits um, you. It's cute. Thank you. <laughs> Mimi, right? You're I'm so like, cute. You are. Yeah, still. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, we attended church. Uh, church was a huge foundation of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I believe in Jesus. I have more of a relationship with God now uh, than I did um, before, but, mm -hmm. uh, when I was thinking about childhood, it was that name, that childhood nickname that mm -hmm. stuck out to me. Um, mm -hmm. so aside from it being cute and fitting, like, I'm like, why does that stick out to me so much? And it reminded me of, um, a time where I was so adventurous and I was so creative mm -hmm. 
And um, it reminded me of just joy and actually being myself without trepidation. And Mm -hmm. um, like, I would think something and I would just be Martinet. Like I would just allow, like I remember um, wanting to go on these bicycle tours throughout my neighborhood with friends or <laughs> like very really silly things, I love but it. Oh, I right? love it. <laughs> um, or I would even like collect rocks or I don't know, just mm-hmm. build things. Like I was a creator, yeah. you know, very mm-hmm. creative. And then I also realized how did I get to the place where I stopped doing that? Um, where I stopped, uh, where I started to overthink all of my actions and mm-hmm. um, felt that my state of being was wrong. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, you know, the, the social worker in me and just, you know, the, the individual, the, the inquisitive part of me, you know, who wants answers, um, just went back to the etiology or just the history mm-hmm. behind what happened. Right. So my parents right. divorced around the age, um, ages of four or five. So young, mm-hmm. um, I do recall seeing um, an instance of domestic violence in my household. I didn't see a whole mm-hmm. lot of that, um, but I, I do remember, you know, this instance. And I know that uh, in the work that I've done, you may not remember everything up here, but sometimes, like physiologically, uh, you keep track. Your body keeps score. It's in your body. Mm-hmm. It's in your body, right? Because that's mm-hmm. sort of how we work. We're meant to like yeah. stay safe, right? Mm-hmm. So. Um, I remember this instance of my mom holding up this chair and like defending herself uh, uh, from an attack. And I'm like behind this door. I remember that. Um, So, you know, fast forward a little bit, they ended up uh, separating and divorcing. Mm -hmm. And I do Mm -hmm. recall feelings of disappointment, Mm -hmm. you know, because my family had separated. What I knew and what was familiar um, was disrupted. So, I even remember, it's interesting because it's like, well, kids are smart. I mean, they're intuitive. They pick up on that energy, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, they Um, feel everything. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember feeling lonely. I remember feeling um, sad. And Mm -hmm. uh, we, this is when we started going back and forth to my father's house. And Mm -hmm. I even remember at a young age saying, do you still love my mom? Like I recognized that word and that feeling Mm -hmm. and he gave me some sort of answer, you know, like, oh yeah, you know, but people fall out of love or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I felt that love had been taken away, Mm -hmm. you know, that everything that I knew to be true was like off in some way. Um, I just want to make sure I adjust my screen so I can see everything coming (laughs) in, but um, I, I just remember um, also, okay, so So even going back to, so that was four or five years old, around the age of of six or seven years old, Mm -hmm. I remember experiencing um, sexual trauma as well, Um, on and off by two individuals that were close to my family. And Mm -hmm. at the time that it was uncovered, and maybe even perhaps like the way it was uncovered, it was uncovered by my mom who was just immensely horrified by what happened, I, you know, which is understandable as a parent, like I can't imagine what it's like to uncover and realize that this is happening to your precious child, you know? So, but the way that I internalized that horror was I did something wrong. I, you know, Mm -hmm. I felt like I had disappointed her and I knew at that moment that everything that had been happening to me was wrong. And the other side of that is um, I felt that, you know, truth coming out Mm -hmm. um, or the exposure of truth um, is an uncomfortable thing. Mm -hmm. Being truthful, being authentic, I created some sort of belief around that being this uncomfortable thing that happens Mm -hmm. because of how it happened. Right. So then right. I felt like I also had to cover up the feelings of shame that I felt mm-hmm. at that moment. And I didn't know how to process all of that. You know, I just right. knew that um, I didn't want to be a disappointment. You know, I knew that I just wanted to be liked and accepted mm-hmm. and nice. Um, mm-hmm. But I began to confuse everything. I was so confused because my boundaries were intruded on and they were blurred mm-hmm. as well. 
Um, so I just created these new roles for myself that didn't serve me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's you know, where my problems began. <laughs> that, that is, you know, it, to me, it's, it's so sad because I don't know many women that haven't been hurt mm -hmm. sexually, mm -hmm. you know, um, it happened to me by three different men before I was nine. Oh. And what I'm happy to hear is that your mom did do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, my parents, it's not that they, they didn't believe me, but they didn't do anything about it. They, mm -hmm. they, it's a long story that I don't need to go into that, but, um, I'm so glad that something was done, but I could see, it's like, you know, you're, you're going through the divorce of your parents and then having something like this happen. I could understand fully why you would think what is wrong with me. I mm -hmm. remember feeling that too. There's gotta be something wrong with me for someone to do this to me. It has mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. So I understand. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So what, what, yeah. So what, um, so would you say that you started shifting when the parent, your parents divorce happened or more the sexual trauma? When did mm -hmm. you start shifting from the little girl that want to have the bike tours in her neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, mm -hmm. I would say, um, when the, when I saw uh, a negative experience, like just the negative mm -hmm. experience of their, uh, that domestic violence altercation and and when the mm -hmm. divorce happened is when it began mm -hmm. and then yeah. um it deepened even more after i experienced the sexual trauma um mm -hmm. and what happened to me as we know was wrong um mm -hmm. but then the way i internalized it i felt wrong and off and right. i i then felt that if um i couldn't trust myself because i'm wrong mm -hmm. then i had to place trust on other people right. instead of myself. And it's mind boggling to even say that out loud, but that, mm -hmm. um, that was my thought. And that was a new rule that I began to govern myself by. Um, right. And Martina, even at this point, I really began to notice the adults around me and like their irritation. Mm -hmm. Like um, if I was doing something wrong, you know, making mischievous behavior, like, you know, as a child, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was more sensitive to it, you know, likely due to what I had seen, the contentious behavior between parents and people who love each other. Uh, and then uh, this experience of, of trauma, of sexual trauma. So I really began to notice irritation even more um, mm -hmm. to the point that I would want to avoid that because it was so uncomfortable to disappoint right. people and disappoint the um, adult figures um, that were around me, mm -hmm. you know, so whether it was male or female, I, um, I just made sure to say yes at all times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made sure to be very aware yeah. of how I was coming across, you right. know, I, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to yeah. be the recipient of their irritation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want to be a good girl, kind of stay kind of quiet on the side or whatever, and just, mm -hmm kind of manage things for your little part here and then, but not upset the overall group or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I even remember um, an instance or a snapshot of what that looks like. Uh, we would go mm -hmm. to my uh, father's house back and forth. Right. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this moment uh, we were at home and my brother um, wanted us to order, like he wanted pizza. Like we all wanted mm -hmm. pizza. We had a childhood yeah. friend that was over and we were like, okay, you know, who doesn't want pizza? What kid doesn't like that? So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think he was afraid of my father. And I mean, him being two years older than me, I would imagine mm -hmm. that he saw instances of that contentiousness, that, you know, disagreement. Mm -hmm. Um, so he had in his own framework that way, maybe he's someone to be feared, mm -hmm. you know, so I felt that. And, but I was still um, put up to the challenge to make the call to my dad, to call, you know, to yeah. ask him if he could get his pizza. So mm -hmm. uh, and I think my mom was at work or something. My grandmother was home. Mm -hmm. But um, so I, I gather up the courage to make the, the call because my desire for that pizza was greater than uh, <laughs> yeah. <the> not call. <laughs> Little kids, yep. Yeah. Right, right. So mm -hmm. it took courage for me to do it. And then, yeah. you know, as I make the call, um, I received the most irritated response on the other side that mm. was, I mean, he said yes, but it was just like, don't call it the last minute. Like just something that was just like, oh, like it just, I felt it. And right. I didn't like yeah. that. Mm. And it's, 
it's pizza, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like a moment Simple. where I needed my courage. Mm -hmm. I needed my courage. I felt it left. And I felt that my feelings and my desires were invalidated or that I couldn't ask for something right. without mm -hmm. someone's irritation. Gosh. Yeah. I really relate to that too. It's kind of, you're just gingerly walking around, even just mm -hmm. a conversation. you got to build up that courage to even ask. Mm -hmm. And then it's like scary when you get on the phone and then to have that irritation with it. That's, that's hard, but you did it. Yeah. <laughs> you I did, did it. it. You worked it through. I yeah. worked it through. I worked mm -hmm. it through. Um, and I had to figure out how to find that courage again because it left me. Right. 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 Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are going to go to break and then, um, we will talk about a little bit more about your story and then, mm -hmm. um, you know, more transformation, right? That's what yes. the show is all about. Hope and transformation. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. We'll be back, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My guest today is Miriam Matthews, and we've been talking about her story, her childhood story, and what led her into her purpose. But we're going to go back to a point where, you know, a lot of times in life, things have to get a little bit worse before they get better. So um, your parents were struggling, Miriam. Um, how did your, your parents and like mainly your mom, since you lived with her, how did her struggles mm -hmm. affect you? Mm, thank you for asking that. Um, so my mother was a single mother. And mm -hmm. um, she was working very hard. She was a nursing mm -hmm. assistant uh, working in oh, a hospital. Yes, that's hard. Yes, yes. Um, and yes. even her story is, is, is mind boggling. I mean, she was a midwife in Ghana. She had all of these um, accolades. And once she mm -hmm. came over to the US, everything didn't transfer over. But um, oh, so yes. it's like she was working, you know, um, in a position that was related to what she wanted to do, but not completely there. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, I remember hearing a lot about uh, her own pain. Um, she worked very hard, but wasn't fully accepted with you know, where she worked. You know, she, her, mm -hmm. a lot of people made fun of her accent, um, her yeah. differences. Yeah, she mm -hmm. felt like she didn't belong, yeah. um, but she endured because she had you know, children uh, to take care mm -hmm. of. And she also had a family back home in Ghana. And um, it's not uh, unusual to send money back home as well. So she yeah. um, she had a fight within her to keep going and endure. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing that I would hear about a lot is how we constantly needed help. And I mean, who doesn't? But right. uh, it seems that every issue that we had um, was related to money. A lot of money issues. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember um, this very disparaging moment where we're in the kitchen together. It's my grandmother. His name is Patience, and she is so patient. Oh, <laughs> like, that's what I love that. <laughs> <laughs> she really is. Yeah. Um, but uh, we were late on the rent. And I say we because I felt like I was a part of it. I mean, right. uh, it's probably maybe 12, 13. Oh, well, it had to be about 13 or so at this point. And um, times were hard. And I mean, there are times where the heat would be turned off, you know, or mm. we'd be warming up water to, you know, take a, a, a bath that is comfortable. But that was an issue was the rent this time. Right. And mm -hmm. um, the landlord was so upset, <laughs> the land, and, which is understandable. It's like, okay, we expect you to pay the rent on time. Um, right. right. That didn't happen. Right. So, um, she, my mom has the landlord on speaker and she is just going off and off and off on my mother to the point that she actually calls her stupid. And Aww. yeah, I mean, as a, as a kid, right? Like that just really yeah. infuriated me. I, um, I felt so bad, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, someone who's working so hard um, and works really hard is being invalidated in this moment right, and how right, can someone right. that's working so hard be called stupid mm -hmm. that's awful Gosh. it's awful right and mm -hmm. um that was a moment where I really started to become resentful actually and yeah. it was re you know resentment towards um people and resentment towards um my mother even which is mm -hmm. which is also sad um but 
it was because of maybe even the passivity, you know, like I wanted to speak mm-hmm. and say something to the landlord, but I was hushed, yeah. you know, like don't say anything. Um, I felt that there was some hu- humiliation. I felt that she was burdened, but there wasn't, um, I felt like I was a burden too, even though she didn't want me to feel that way. Right. Of course. You know, she just, um, she was working hard and she was just talking about it. You know, right, she's just verbalizing right. it and talking mm-hmm. about our needs. But many times I internalize that as I'm also a, a burden as well. Um, and, you know, I started working at the age of 13 mm-hmm. um, because I felt like it was needed. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, at 12, I was doing some babysitting, but like some hard work at 13. I started working with a mentor right. at our church who had this mm-hmm. building maintenance operation. So I would go and help with like cleaning these big buildings and these different companies. Mm -hmm. Like I carry these vacuum cleaners on my back and like mop and stuff like that. And Marcinay, I even remember being in this uh, gynecology office in this clinic Mm -hmm. where um, in this one office and it was like ran by women. So I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Like, you know, (laughs) it's amazing, right? So anytime I would enter into the office, I would just take my time in her office because she Mm -hmm. had all she had like 20 pictures on her wall um, of pictures of her, of her two girls, two little girls. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you could tell, like, it, it was pictures that started maybe when they were like two years old and maybe taken right. every two or three years. So yeah. like the end was um, them being grown ups, like they were grown ups. So babies right. to like, grown-ups. oh yeah. And I, it was just, it was also, it was like, though it gave me some moments of happiness. So I'm like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. it's so amazing. I felt yeah. like that is such like an amazing success that I don't have. You know, how can I experience that level of success? I felt like yeah. it was something that wasn't for me. Um, and um, something, you know, happiness is something that other people uh, enjoy I or receive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I, I bet that was fuel though, wasn't it? It was fuel, fuel in your it, belly to. Hmm. It was, it was. I mean, it, it, it showed me something else, but it, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't realize it. I, I could use that fuel until later on. Right. Um, I made like between 90 and hundred dollars or so on the weekends. Mm-hmm. And um, so, so even going backwards, you know, during that phone call with the landlord, um, mm-hmm. I finally, um, in order to just kind of like shut things up, I offered yeah. the hundred dollars that I had just to get her off the phone. Right. right. And it did get right. her off the phone, but then I was normalizing, um, you know, these different rules that didn't serve me. All right. Rules mm-hmm. of, um, not asking for things, rules of, um, I can't talk about things that hurt me, you know, just mm-hmm. being silent, you know, yeah. um, don't be yourself, uh, because it's not good enough or, uh, I normalized some sort of role of just giving and giving and giving mm-hmm. um, because I knew that I didn't want other people to experience what I had, mm-hmm. you know, like the disappointment or the irritation that I experienced. So I became a giver to the point of like overexertion as well. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar with that. <laughs> I began yeah. to overcorrect. Um, mm-hmm. So then, okay, so then I struggled with these negative beliefs about myself um, and, you know, feelings of being unworthy and uh, that something was wrong with me. Um, I question if even at a young age, you know, uh, whether or not I could be a good mother, whether or not I could be successful Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. at a very young age, Martinet. And I, you know, I'm like, where did these thoughts come from? And just in my, in my faith and background, we believe that there's also an enemy that drives, you know, disconnection and disbelief and discouragement. And it's like, well, of course we want to, you know, the, the younger, the better, you know, to start mm-hmm. that because, um, it can be, it can feel so cemented until you realize that there's actually hope to change things. Yes. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. like you're, you're talking about being in that office and you see the pictures that, like, could I ever have that? It's like, I can relate to that. You know, my life, my story is different, but I can relate to that. Um, but then there was also, I don't know if it was true for you and it kind of sounds like it might've been like, I always, even in the depths of the trauma mm-hmm. I had, I, I tell people sometimes it was almost like being in a cave. It was really dark, but then there was like 
bits of light, mm -hmm. like a little bit of light. And I, I thought that to be God that mm -hmm. was saying, you know what, you're going to be okay. You're going to get through this and you're going to do something good. It took me mm -hmm. a long time to believe that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I always knew that I could use this stuff for something. I just didn't know what, is it kind of like that for you too? Like it mm -hmm. is, it is mm -hmm. kind of like that because even then, although I created many like beliefs that didn't serve mm -hmm. me, I also, um, activated some sort of action. Like I mm -hmm. had a job, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, the job, yeah. it's not like it was like, so, um, it's not like it violated labor laws for children, you know, like I, was, right, I right. still went to school, I did things, but then I was yeah. also able to buy myself things. It was like, mm -hmm. oh, I have, I was developing some sense of autonomy and independence right. as well right. that gave me hope to keep going. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm like, if I can really do this, mm -hmm. right? If I can and do to this look at it like that. Yeah. To look at it that way, um, to have that insight. And if I can do this at that age, I can do it. Um, I can do it as I'm older as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that reminds me, I have, a, I have a friend who ran a marathon not that long ago, mm -hmm. and she didn't do it because she loves running. She did it because she thought she could always look back that, hey, I ran a marathon. I can do this too. Mm -hmm. And you being so young like that, I started pretty early myself, but not that early. And, mm -hmm. um, and you like, you did not only have that sense of autonomy, but it's kind of like, wow, you know, I can do something even at 12 and 13, boy, I can do something here. That's really amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I also yeah. have these planes that are, oh, I, I live very close to an air force base. So if you're wondering what is that noise, that's what that is. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, so even then there was like this major internal conflict within me, mm -hmm. um, but the, the glimmer, you know, those glimmers of hope, the, that light yeah, would yeah. also pull through as well. Um, so even though I had, you know, uh, I experienced this confluence of uh, the domestic violence that I saw or the sexual yeah. trauma and negative beliefs, um, I could hang on to the fact that I could keep going. But mm -hmm. before that happened, it was... The, I did set a very low bar for myself, not realizing mm -hmm. that I can have the success that I wanted, right? right. Um, because whatever I rehearse for myself is what I will remember. Right. And, and also the pain that was not um, transformed was also transmitted. Mm -hmm. Different parts of my life. You did, did your mom being that um, she was very successful in Ghana and then she comes here did that kind of play like a, a a bit of like a role because it didn't transfer she had a pretty good position there mm -hmm. and then coming here being a nursing assistant did that did that make you strive harder did that make did it make you feel a little bit scared or did that play mm -hmm. a part in that in your role at all or your you're going up the ladder well I think um she was maybe a little bit because I, I mean, I was born here. So I didn't see all of her mm -hmm. struggles back home, uh, which the conditions right. were much worse, you know, in terms of where she lived. I did visit Ghana one time in her family home, but mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I think she, I mean, came here to explore dreams and uh, mm -hmm. to create um, an even more, uh, not sophisticated, but um, just to dive into what she created there, but make it even better here. And mm -hmm. when she was hitting those blocks, it, it, there was some uh, discouragement that came with that. There was pain mm -hmm. that I saw that came with that, right. you know? Um, and you feel like, as again, as a, as a child, you feel for your parents. You don't want them to be upset or disappointed. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are gonna take a break again. And I would love to know what brought you to your why? What brought you to do what you wanna do? Mm -hmm. when we get back if okay. there was a single instant quite a few instances i'd love to know what, what that is okay um thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll be back in just a few Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My guest today, Miriam Matthews, has been talking about her story and what she has overcome. And we were just we were just ending the last segment about um, well, we're going to go into your why. 
But before we do that, uh, what relationship did you have with yourself, um, like regarding limiting beliefs, what you can do, what you can achieve? Mm-hmm. So I had um, these limiting beliefs about not being good enough um, mm-hmm. or um, not being able to really have the outcomes that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And, you know, what was at the essence of that was, um, I mean, people pleasing behavior too, because I mm-hmm. felt like um, I, I couldn't have peace without somebody else's approval, you know, oh and gosh, it really wasn't peace, right? <laughs> yeah. It's not um, peace at all. Peace at any no. price is no peace. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then saying yes became even easier uh, mm-hmm. because I had a fear of rejection. I wanted mm-hmm. to fit in. I didn't mm-hmm. like confrontation. You know, I didn't want to be the recipient, remember, of somebody else's anger. Yes. Um, and I actually thought that I was responsible for other people's peace of mind. Like I would literally like squeeze everything um, out of myself to fill up their cup because I thought that if I could make them happy, then in some ways I have value because I've made them happy. Mm-hmm. 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 Boy, um, do I relate to that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're the so, peacemaker of the family. The you were the peacemaker. Yeah. So was I. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so yeah, I definitely fell into and adopted that role. <laughs> like, yeah. To the yeah. Yeah. And um, so even as I was, you know, continued to be called like, you know, my childhood nickname and Mimi mm-hmm. uh, years yeah. after the trauma, I actually began to recreate trauma, you know, so like these mm-hmm. self-sabotaging behaviors because of uh, what I thought about myself. And, you know, my beliefs also led me to compare myself almost like I did in that, in that clinic, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just this distance between what I see, which is like a, is a picture (laughs) of people smiling and people don't smile 24 seven. It's not like they're living uh, their lives just in a picture, which is funny because, you know, sometimes we do that with social media. We think that, oh, absolutely. Right. And we think that, oh, they have these wonderful, amazing, perfect lives, but it's really not like that, you know, um, but nor does the thoughts of myself have to be inherently wrong, um, Mm -hmm. which leads me to feel sad all the time, you know, so it's Mm -hmm. like these different extremes. Um, So I got into relationships that were not healthy for me. Mm -hmm. They, um, like anytime I'd, you know, I'd look for Prince Charming, uh, you know, Mm -hmm in the wrong place. Like if the sign said the wrong place to find love, Martinet, that's where I will go because I'm like, it just makes sense to go there. (laughs) I understand. (laughs) Yeah, but that's not what I want. Yeah, right, Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the outcome that you were going, you you think you were on this path, but then that really wasn't quite it. How did you pivot into the next... Or how did you pivot into what you really wanted? So what I really wanted was to accept myself um, Mm -hmm. and to accept myself without comparison because it was the comparison that led me feeling depleted and uh, deficient as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I didn't want to, it was, I think, becoming tired of being tired of that. (laughs) Like I, I wanted to stop weaponizing myself as mm-hmm. as crazy as it is to say it loud, um, I wanted to stop creating self-destruction. Mm-hmm. And I read somewhere, Martine, that a disempowered person uh, is actually dangerous because of what their thoughts are. Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, yeah. Right? And you know, right? like what you're saying, yes. And like what you're saying is, I was just talking to a girlfriend actually this morning mm-hmm. that um, a lot of times when, when the abuse is over, however mm-hmm. we were abused, we often continue mm-hmm. in what we call as as coaches, probably in your world, as well as mine, my, my community is a self-abuse room. Mm-hmm. We spend a lot of time in there continuing what our abuser did. And how, how terrible is that Ugh. to do to ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Even in preparing for, um, for speaking with you, as I was reflecting mm-hmm. on, all, on all of this, I cannot tell you mm-hmm. the amount of times that I cried. Um, not tears of just sadness, mm-hmm. but just the realization yeah. of how much I carried over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, I I thought that you know even if I had my own car, it was better for me to be in the passenger seat of it because I I associated people telling me what to do, people driving for me as being polite, <laughs> and this was the mm-hmm. nice like you said, good. You know, this was yeah. good, Mimi. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. and. It, not realizing that even though I was in the passenger seat, my, my, I say my rocks of pain was still mm-hmm. influencing where the car went right. and because I was attracting who was in the car, mm-hmm. you know? So if it hit a tree, Martinet, I could uh, blame the person. <laughs> so like, you know, see, you hurt us, you know, you hurt me. This is what I was expecting. You don't mm-hmm. care, gotcha. you know? Gotcha. You weren't looking out for me. You weren't looking out for us. You know, mm-hmm. I, I could have those thoughts. But however, I also realized that that's not the outcome I wanted. When I blame somebody else, I'm giving my power away. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There is, it's kind of a popular movie, especially right now. And, and I think it's one of my all-time favorites, The Holiday mm-hmm. with Jude Law. And all, it's just incredibly sexy for sure. Men and women, you know, just a very sexy kind of kind of thing. But there's there's a a part in that movie where one of the lead characters um she there's a there's a man in there a lot much older man mentor for her you know and he says something to her and she's like my god all the years I've had of therapy and you finally nailed it on the head I should be the leading lady of my life Mm. not all this people all these pleasing behaviors of everybody else I should at least be the leading lady of my life Mm -hmm. that just stuck with me so much more than the fun little sexy parts of those movies that is what has stuck with me like yeah I want to at least be the leading lady of my life yes right yes yes that really resonates with me because for so long I thought my DNA was tainted I'm like oh you know because of what happened um mm-hmm. but not realizing that I get to recreate which is what right. my company is all about is defining yes. your DNA and I'll talk about mm-hmm. that a little bit later but um, yes, the outcome that I wanted was to actually be empowered and to have power. So mm-hmm. um, I also had to realize that there was a cost mm-hmm. of not solving this problem. Absolutely. You know, and not taking that accountability. Um, and the cost was not finding who I uh, am, you know, my true self. It was uh, the cost mm-hmm. of not finding out the truth. Of who you are. Of who I am, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so then there was this dichotomy of me going on. And um, I thought that, well, you know, Mimi was a poster child. And I liked the idea of her because she was always accepted, whether it was at church or mm-hmm. somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Not realizing that, that, you know, the dichotomy was then um, creating this actress lifestyle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of, I'm not getting paid for this. This is not like, you know, being an actor right. is that this that is a craft that I'm getting paid for or that I found purposeful not not knocking it I'm just saying that I did it because I thought that that was the way to survive mm-hmm. yeah oh, I relate to that mm-hmm. but one of the things that one of the things that you say a quote for you um my wounds are someone else's wings yeah. I love love that uh-huh. um we have to go on a break in a few minutes but could you talk about that a little bit Yes, I well, that. I've heard that. That's from, so powerful. <laughs> I heard that from Coach um, Coach Sean. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. That, I should know that one then, but <laughs> yeah, I guess it didn't hit me as much as it coming from you. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I think in realizing that I actually don't have to be afraid to share my story, mm-hmm. um, which is why, like, I, I just just really honor you and just your platform because um, it's realizing that my voice or just being here today is a representation that I can still keep going. I'm still living. I'm not perfect. I'm doing things imperfectly. I'm doing this imperfectly, Mm -hmm. but you know, my voice can help somebody else that needed to hear my story and give them the wings to just keep going. Mm, I love that. And I'm so honored to have you. I'm so honored to have you. And I was actually, I, I did a little bit of a post in, in a group of mine today, just saying that this is one of my favorite times of the week. I love this. I love hearing everybody's, I love interviewing, hearing transformational stories of hope. And I don't do it perfectly. I get emotional. I, I don't say always the right things, but 
I, I hope that whatever is said today from you or me, that somebody gets what they need mm -hmm. because that's what it's about. It's not about us. It's what right. God has for us to put out yeah. there into the world. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to take a break again. And then I, I would just love to know um, more about who you talk to. And, oh, and, and actually, even though all your information is going through the, the screen on commercials and everything, what, could you tell everybody just with your voice, where can everybody find you? Oh, absolutely. Um, so you can find me at bonus. Well, um, bonus.defineyourdna.com um, is one way. The other way is following me on Instagram um, mm -hmm. at defineyourdna.com. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we'll be right back, everyone, with a little more of Miriam's story and what she does for all you wonderful people out there. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we overcome everything and compromise nothing. My guest today, Miriam Matthews, has been talking about her journey into um, hope, into purpose and to turning her pain into purpose and healing. So Miriam, can you tell us today, like who, I know you work with Christian women, who do you serve? Like what is your message for someone who's looking for hope, looking for a new purpose, looking to transform the things that they've been through into their purpose and passion? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, the, what comes to me, um, and what I know <laughs> because it really speaks to me is, uh, I help the individual or the woman that is tired of the being in hiding mm -hmm, and wants mm -hmm. to truly discover, uh, who they are outside of what they have known to be true. And I say, mm -hmm. quote, you know, I do quotes on purpose, um, because many times we need to shed those layers of false self to really understand true self. Um, I, you know, and so it, yes, Christian women, but um, with even the uh, description of maybe even um, a disconnection in their faith, you know, mm -hmm. feeling lost, mm -hmm. uh, you know, being a part of a, su a support. I like to provide that support um, and that mm -hmm. encouragement and um, be that, you know, the, the wreck the train wreck that actually learned lessons and got back on course um, so that individuals can receive yeah. the support they need and, and the mentorship they need, because that is something that I needed. When I, um, well, you know, when I was talking about this idea of me, me, first it was, mm -hmm. it was me, it was a person, I was free. Right. Then right. it became an idea that I would hide behind because I felt like I'm not her. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually after the failed romantic relationships that then led to this pregnancy that I had mm -hmm. outside of marriage. And mm -hmm. I felt so much shame, Martinet, because that's mm -hmm. something that I had learned was a grave sin. And, you know, so right. I actually thought that um, people's judgment of me was actually going to kill me, which is, it's just, it's yeah. amazing. It's just crazy to say that, right? But fear, when we go it into is, but I get you, we mm -hmm. protect ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I, I thought it was going to kill me, but it didn't, <laughs> it didn't kill me. Right. Um, and the very person that I, uh, expressed or projected some, uh, resentment towards, um, my mother, God used her to be, uh, a, a light in my life. And, and for some people, it may not be their mother. It could be, mm -hmm. um, my voice today. It could be, uh, right. your voice, Martinet, um, mm -hmm. every time you speak, it could be someone else where you experience some love that gives you the courage to just keep on going. Right. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't really judgment. Um, I, I mean, it, I thought judgment was going to, was going to kill me. And I thought that they had this, that they would be disappointed in me, but, uh, it was, I really, I think projected that onto them. I think maybe they were just more so shocked because of the perfect, the perfect way that I was presenting myself, which didn't mm -hmm. allow for uh, me to just be me and just to, to right. live. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you're talking about the support. I think everybody needs that. And, you know, Les Brown, 
always used to say, I think he probably still does in, in his speeches and everything, that um, sometimes we need somebody else to believe in us before we can believe in ourselves. Mm-hmm. I sure know that's definitely was for me. And I, especially being a coach as you are, um, that I, I really don't believe we can do it alone. Mm-hmm. Not entirely. It doesn't mean you can't make some changes on your own, but to have someone else there just to walk with you, just to hold your hand for the steps that you need to take to Mm -hmm. encourage you to um, offer support because the answers are inside of each individual person, Mm -hmm. but we can help draw that out. We can help, help you shine your light. Um, So in realizing that and realizing that Mm -hmm. I do have value on the inside and realizing that I need new information in order to make Mm -hmm. uh, changes, I began to make those changes. And that was also realizing, Martine, that perfectionism doesn't allow for compassion. And I wasn't being compassionate towards myself or even the six-year-old me that experienced trauma, Mm -hmm. which is Mm -hmm. horrific to to say that. But that's, you know, many times that's what we're doing. So, um, I mean, it was full circle how God brought that back. And my mother... Um, I, I was able to re- release resentment because my mom didn't mm-hmm. place judgment on me. She was so compassionate when she found out that I was pregnant. She was so loving and compassionate. And I was able to see her as a person who was just doing her best and, right, and right. Honor her capacity as well as honor mine as I began to release judgment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's so good. You had a mother that was supportive, that was loving, that was mm-hmm. kind so that you could be yourself in that moment and make decisions from there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, then, you know, my why became really strong. You know, the reason why I um, work with women, the reason why I'm so passionate is because um, I needed courage to change. Change requires change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we don't yeah. always like that, but yes. <laughs> oh, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> it is. Even Lisa Nichols, I always love um, just the way she describes things. And uh, we can be more committed, she says, to mm-hmm. a familiar discomfort than we are to an unfamiliar new possibility, <sighs> right? And it's like, For me, like that, you know, that looks like being in a corner of Mm -hmm. this mental house that I had. That corner represented pain. Um, Mm -hmm. That corner represented, um, yeah, just, and it radiated and everything was rotten in the house. But I had to realize that um, in order for me to create something new, I had to do something different. Yes, absolutely. That's where the investment started coming in. And the way I look at that too, Martinet, is my thermometer, it's wintertime, right? Say it's wintertime and I keep on setting my thermometer to 40 degrees, thinking that, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to stay warm by just self-protecting and putting jackets on and blankets because I didn't want to pay for the heat that was going to uh, give me the activation that I needed. I needed to actually start paying for things and not seeing it as a cost, Mm -hmm. but as an investment. Investment, exactly. Yes. Love it. Yeah. 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 And that I could, um, I began to experience a return on investment after Mm -hmm. I invested in spiritual growth programs and business coaching and, um, a book camp, you know, I Mm -hmm. wrote a book called my body isn't mine, how to heal from sexual trauma and find peace. You know, Mm -hmm. those investments allowed me to be a business owner, you know, of two businesses today. Yes. That is, that is absolutely amazing that, yeah, I mean, cause it is true. We got it. We got to, um, we got to sit in the discomfort, take steps. We have to invest in ourselves. Yeah. So we just have about a minute left. What do you want to impart on our guests today? Take action, take yeah. action. Uh, realize that change requires change. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that yeah. you can uh, create the life that you want to have because, you know, I always like to say faith without works is dead. That's scripture um, mm-hmm. that I can't just wait and wait and wait and wait and wait that I need to activate something so I can get to a new point that I want to be. 
Mm -hmm. I'm having a workshop next week that I love to invite individuals to um, who would like to invest in themselves to gather new information that disrupts everything that you may know to be true that's actually false, but to then begin activating new change. Mm, that sounds amazing. Yes, yes. yes. If, if, you're, if you're interested, bonus.defineyourdna.com bonus.defineyourdna.com because your past is your push Perfect. for your purpose. Absolutely it is. And I remember you said your little girl goes around the house saying that all yeah. the time. I love, love, love that. Woo. <laughs> she perfect. does. She does. It's amazing. It's so cute to hear. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah, they know that I'm all about purpose. <laughs> That's so good. I, I, I can only imagine how beautiful they're going to turn out and how purposeful they're going to turn out because of you. They're beautiful, the mama. That's amazing. Now you're going to bring some tears to my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You're awesome. Yeah. Absolutely oh, awesome. You. Thank you. So, thank you so much. I want to, oh, and I want absolutely. And I want to thank you so much for coming on today, sharing your amazing wisdom, your story. And I know you've touched hearts today. There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. So, thank you. And thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate it. And if any of you out there have a transformational story that you want to share, please send me a, a direct message on Instagram, Facebook, um, a an email to Martine Martine at martineemmons.com and um, we'll have a chat. And again, thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you next Friday. Bye. Thank you for listening to Transformation with Martine. Did listening today spark a sense of hope and possibility? Hold on to this feeling and tune in every second and fourth Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific for more inspiring conversations with Martine and her guests. They will show you there is hope and you are right where you need to be. Martine is dedicated to supporting you right where you are while launching you towards promise, passion, and possibility that leads to the fulfilled life your heart aches for. If you're tired of being stuck, schedule a complimentary consultation with Martine and get on the exciting path towards the life you want to be living. Visit martineemmons.com and make your appointment today. Mm-hmm.